This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Tracker. Coin size tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com right now and enter the promo code KNOWHOW to receive a free Tracker Bravo with any purchase. And by Automatic, a small adapter that turns your clunker into a smarter connected car. For more information on their brand new Automatic Pro Adapter, visit automatic.com slash twit and enter the limited time offer code twit20 for $20 off the new device. On today's show, you'll know how to roll your own security camera. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burdett. And for the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100, 1,000 minutes, we're going to be playing with some of the gear that we've been geeking out to so you can take it home and geek out on your own. Brian, stop fondling my security camera. I can't help it. It's a cute little guy. Look at this. Yeah, actually, if you if you switch to that view, uh, this is uh, primarily what we're going to be playing with. We've got ourselves some PTZ cameras that we've combined with some very popular... Don't get away. You can't escape the camera. It's okay. It's all it seeing eye, Brian. It won't attack you if you don't have a weapon. It's oh. not sporty. Oh, is that what you think? What? Is that what you think? Ah! 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 Sorry, no. no ah! uh, this, of course, this is a PTZ camera. This one's a, an Amcrest. Ah. Uh, but the big thing is that we've been having a lot of people who have been asking us, how can I get something like a drop cam, but perhaps not using up all that bandwidth? How can I have a security system that can watch the different corners of my house without breaking the bank? Well, well folks, we're going to give Ooh. you a two-camera setup complete with PTZ cameras and its own NAS that stores all the images and videos for about 750 bucks. How about that? I want this. Yes, it's very, very nice. And of course, this this beautiful router doesn't come with it. This is a... <laughs> uh, yeah, this this expensive piece of hardware right there. WRT54G. This uh, is, you it's know, a classic. This is a, you know, it's, it's funny. I've got about 10 of these, and I was going to toss them out, but I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you just want a dumb router. You don't yeah. want all the smart... I tried to use the Linksys 1900 AC for the this project. The fancy one, yeah. But it kept saying, I don't have internet right now. I guess I'm going to turn myself off. <gasps> it's like, no, just... It's too smart for its own good. It's too smart, Brian. So <laughs> it's I needed something stupid. This is what we got. Okay, cool. Uh, but what we're going to be doing over the next couple of minutes is I'm going to show you the proper way to set up a security camera and what you should be looking at, the, the features that you should be playing with at first. Just like anything else we play with at Know How, familiarity will breed a more advanced understanding of the product. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to turn on all the fancy features and then have it not work. This this happens <laughs> a lot. Right. Turn on all the fancy features, have it not work, because some, when you're using something like this, you're looking for re reliability and easy access, right? But right. not to the point that other people have access to it, right? Precisely. You want to be able to secure the, your security cam. Which is why this is actually just the start of a series, because after we do this basic series on setting up your network DVR or security cam DVR, we're also going to show you how to put it behind the three router setup that uh, mm. Steve Gibson suggested. Mm. The onion technique. The, uh, yeah, it, basically to, to separate it from everything that you need to trust on your network because right. security cameras, by their very nature, especially since we want to access them from outside of the house, yes. they should not be trusted. No. Uh, and, you know, especially with IoT devices getting owned, we want to make sure that if it does get owned, mm -hmm. A, we'll be able to know that it's owned and B, that it's not going to affect anything that is important to me. Yeah, and I think uh, that has been one of the baby steps of, of learning as far as the Internet of Things and incorporating more and more things into your home that control your lights, your garage door, maybe yeah. your locks. Like, these are things that you don't want... On the inside of your network. Exactly. Precisely, yeah. yeah. But let's start with this. Okay, uh, first of all, this kit that we're going to be talking about it came with two of these. These are the Amcrest Pro HD... They're actually pretty decent. It, you're going to have to open that one up. I, I do horrible with, with shrink wrapping. Sure. It uses a Sony IMX322. It's a 1080p, 30 frame per second sensor. And it, I mean, if you, again, if you go back to my computer, Alex, this is pretty good. I mean, look at the resolution on this thing. There is a little bit of lag because you're going to get that anytime you have an IP security camera system. But this is a real 1080p sensor. This is not 1080p, but it looks blocky. 
Uh, this is 1080p, and I've, I'm already throttling it because this is a gigabit camera, but it's a it's a 100 megabit per second router. So what's happening right now, or megabyte per second router, what's happening right now is I'm actually constraining this from its max resolution, and it still looks pretty dang good. Yeah, no, it does look really sharp. Yeah, and, and it's, it's got the fish eye, so you're definitely capturing a wide view angle here. Precisely, it's a 90 degree viewing angle. So I mean, there's from right about here to right about there. So there's there's very very a very thin range that you'll be able to avoid the, the detection of this camera. And of course, since it's PTZ, you could set it so that it will follow any any motion that it finds. So once you get in the view, it will just say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna lock on you." It says it has night vision too. Yes, it will do. Uh, it's IR mode up to about 32 feet, uh, and it's got a yeah. ring of IR uh, LEDs. Oh, so okay, it will cool. Illuminate the area. And uh, it will, you know, give you a view in the dark. Very nice. Now inside yes. the box, it's it's pretty bare bones, but uh, you know you're going to have the camera, you're going to have the power supply, which, by the way, it's powered off of what looks like a USB plug. Yeah. But don't just plug it into any USB power supply because what's going to happen is it won't supply enough amperage, and then the camera just resets. Oh, okay. And I learned that the okay. hard way. Don't do that. So use use an actual dedicated adapter or like a battery bank if you want to run this thing wireless. It's gigabit ethernet, but it's also 802.11 uh, ABGN. Uh, okay. So this, this will work wirelessly, I, but I will say the only time I would use wireless is if I've got one of these um, sort of the wildcard cameras where I move it from place to place so no one can ever scope out the security. Otherwise, always wired. It's too easy to blot out a wireless camera. And, you know, honestly, do you want to, to lose crucial <laughs> images because there was a wireless glitch? Yeah, no, not at all. That's not... <laughs> I don't trust wireless with my gaming. I'm not going <laughs> to trust wireless with my security cam. Precisely. Uh, now, uh, as nice as the uh, the Amcrest system is, there are a few things that are annoying about it. First is, it doesn't work really well in Chrome. So I'm in Firefox right now. There's a plug-in uh -oh. that you, you launch in Chrome, but then it has to launch the plug-in and not the browser. So, I mean... Oh, they got to okay. fix this. It's not really their fault. It's it's Chrome's fault. Google uh, is messing around with Chrome. What about right Edge, though? It works in Edge. Oh, okay. So Edge, yeah. Chrome, uh, I haven't tried it in an Opera, but oh, look at this. Hmm? Oh, it's infinite, what? Brian. Oh, my. oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? See, even when you zoom in, you, you can get to about there before you start seeing the blockiness. And, that, it, and that's a digital zoom. That's not an optical it zoom. You opened up the iris, too. Like, it's pretty dark behind the screen there. It's pretty good. But w there are some things that I always do whenever I want to set up a camera. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna, to uh, guide <laughs> it through that process. Hold on. I, I'm going to focus it on you. Why? Because... Because that's a good shot. It's the most flattering angle that anyone could possibly <laughs> be filmed from. It also includes a mount. So if you want, want to mount this on the wall, um, if you go ahead and take yeah. that out. Uh, which part? This part. Yeah. Right, that, that's the camera. So it's got the cable. It's got the mount. It's got the power adapter. It's got a manual that I didn't read uh, <laughs> because, you know, I wanted to. Because why would you do that? Why would yeah. I ever do that? Underneath oh, the, the camera, you're going to find this. This is a standard tripod mount. So... Any, anything that will mount a standard camera will hold this, but it also includes that. So if you want yeah. to wall mount this thing, they even give you the bracket. That's pretty cool. Now, this, this is important. Uh, you've got your gigabit Ethernet. You've got audio in and audio out. So if you want it, you can, auto, all, all, you can automatically do two-way audio. So I can press a button on the browser. And like, say, hey, right? what are you doing? Uh, actually, if I do this, it's going to, hello? Oh, you wait. don't have a uh, going I, I internet it off. Yeah. I, I can actually have a two-way conversation with someone that the camera <laughs> sees, but I can also hook this up to an audio system so I can amplify my voice more than just the internal speaker. Uh, okay. This right here, this is the relay block. So if I've got like door sensors, window sensors, mm -hmm. I can run that in here. And if someone triggers that, I can say, okay, when you... When you uh, when the door sensor is triggered, PTZ the camera over to the door, oh, or when the window sensor okay. is triggered, PTZ over to the window. Oh, that's now, you, pretty clever. That's very clever. Now this part I love. This I I used to only see on higher end cameras. Oh, that's a micro SD card slot, which means that even if someone were to take down your your network, or let's right. say they Cut steal the Ethernet cable or the, something, the NAS, yeah. you could have it record locally. Right, and I guess it would. You can set it to just do a loop. Or yeah, something? it just yeah. Uh, you know just keep recording until it's done, and then record over. Yeah. But I can also have the camera set to say push out to an FTP server anytime it detects motion. Th this is you know this is a pretty good system. And actually, if you go to that link there, Alex, you can get two of these for 190 bucks. Hmm. 
Hmm, not bad. I mean, one a, little a single camera like this five years ago would have cost you at least four hundred dollars. So you know, they're they're making some strides. I the, would like to even use these in the studio for product right? cams. You know, <laughs> right? I, I mean, they look good. They look really, really good. Hmm. But let's go ahead and look at the interface. So if you if you come back to my screen here, okay. uh, we're going to jump into the setup. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is when you plug these in. Actually, go ahead and start setting this one up. Uh, you know, sure. Maybe, I got a cable here for you. Uh, this is a blue one. Blue, oh, okay. Blue, blue Ethernet cable. Yeah. So while got I work it. on this, you work on that. The first time you plug in one of these cameras, it's going to um, it's going to do a firmware update, which I like. I mean, I used to get annoyed by that, but I love when a product, when a company knows that most likely the firmware of the products is going to be uh, out of date. Right. Uh, and so this will automatically look at the cloud service and say, hey, can I update anything? Mm -hmm. And if it can, it will just download automatically. Uh, but that's not what we want but to do. But it comes with a CD, Padre. Don't throw the CD away. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the network settings because we always want to set static for our security cameras. I know there are people who like to set statics inside of the router. I can actually tell my router to use mm -hmm. a particular IP address for a particular Mac device, uh, right. the, the media access control number for a device. I like to set it on the device itself because if I'm talking about security cameras, I'm talking about devices I never want to drift from their IPs. No. Even if I replace the router, that should never ever change. Right. Yeah. By the way, the other, the other thing that you really want to do here is uh, if you go into your router, uh, and this is why I don't use the utility, 2168200.1. If you go, any, any decent router is going to have, oh, what happened there? Is going to have a way, by the way, it's a super secret password, Brian. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's not the same password that's on my luggage, for yes, sure. Yes, it, it is, it is. Oh. Oh. Uh, but any, any decent router is always going to have a list of the clients, the DHCP clients. So all of the clients that, uh, that requested an address, mm -hmm. and right there, see AMC00, that's actually the MAC address for the camera that you just plugged in. Oh. If I didn't want to use the CD that they gave me to run the utility that would show me the camera, mm -hmm. I could just log into my router and say, oh, it's, it's 143. Okay. So if I go to 192.168.1.1, oh, 200.143. Take so this is the second one. This is the one that you just ah, unpacked. Yeah, right. right? Pretty cool. And uh, I think it's admin. Admin? What's the default here? Uh, uh, ad, I bet it's admin admin. No. Yeah. <gasps> New password. Okay, ah, folks. Right off the bat. I like actually, that. Actually, you come back here, Alex, because this is important. You always need to choose, especially for security or Internet of Devi uh, Things device, a very secure password. So what right. I would suggest yeah. one, is two, one, three, four. two, three, four, five. No one will ever no guess that. No one will ever know. If you really want to get tricky, start with zero. Okay, seriously, don't do that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, please do not just, do that. Just don't. don't no. that's, a, that's a bad idea. Uh, but we want to set this for a static address. Now, let me go back to the other one because on the other one, I'm already starting that. So this, I set it at as a static as 211. The reason why I set it for 211 is if you go to my router setup right here, let's go to my setup. Mm -hmm. uh, I have it set so that it's going to start serving out DHCP addresses mm -hmm. at 100, and it's going to serve out 50 of them. So it means I will automatically, anytime a device asks for an address, yeah. it will give it something between 100 and 149. That's per usually default, right? That's that's pretty much default. But it means that anything out of that range other than one, which is the, the gateway itself, mm -hmm. I can use as a static. What I've decided is I'm going to use 200 and above as static as all my security devices. So that those 50, 54 addresses, mm -hmm. actually 55 including zero, belong to my security devices. So any security cameras, the NAS that I'm going to throw on to it so that it can record all the video, uh, any IoT devices, I'm going to put above 200. Right. Uh, and, and again, this is just something that I've developed over the years as that I know that anything above 200 is going to be a security device. That's right. where I automatically ping if I'm looking for something. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our setup. Uh, wait, wait, which, that one? No, that one. That we're going to go back to our setup and we're going to set this. Oh, well, first of all, it wants to upgrade. So this is the, the process I was talking uh, about. And this is kind of cool because it, it's going to do it automatically. Nice. Um, you know, I remember it used to be a pain in the tuchus to upgrade <laughs> security cameras. And oh, you, yeah. You really have to. I mean, I, I was a big fan of access cameras for the longest time. They were mm -hmm. enterprise grade, but they never upgraded their firmware. And so what happened is anytime you had 
an exploit where someone could take advantage of the camera. Nothing you, you basically do. had to just replace the camera. Oof. Um, Oof. Yeah, that is a no-no. No. That's, that's a definite no-no. Uh, but okay, while that's upgrading, let's go ahead and go to the other one and look at the other things that I want to do. Um, I'm setting a default gateway. If I wanted to, mm -hmm. this security camera actually has a, a dynamic DNS feature. Uh, we've covered DDNS on know-how before. Essentially, it's using a third-party provider to be able to, like, say, camera one, dot twit, dot TV. Right. And it would automatically uh, uh, forward to the right IP address and the right port to get to the camera. So if you wanted to access it from outside your local network? Precisely, which we're not going to need to do because when we add the NAS, the NAS is the thing that's going to control that. Right. And that's what we want because we don't want a camera. We want all the cameras that are connected to our network. Right. Uh, one, some of the other things here, and again, you, you want to start simple. Yes, you can use Wi-Fi. I, uh, it, th this works just like it does on, uh, on your laptop where it's going to show you all of the, the, the APs that are available inside this area. Uh, but again, I'm not a big fan of wireless. Yeah. I might use it as a backup. Uh, but you know, if I can get wired, I will always go wired. Can you have it set <laughs> as a backup? Like if you have it hardwired and it detects that there's a loss of connection, that's, that's it'll automatic. Fall back? I mean, okay. it, yeah. So if you have it linked up, it's yeah. gonna it preferences the Ethernet, and then and if Ethernet goes out, it goes. It'll to Wi -Fi. fall back. That's cool. Right. Uh, the other thing that you might want to play with is um, actually no, don't don't play with any of that stuff. That's gonna mess you up. The events. This is where security cameras get really, really useful. Because when I can start playing with events, what that allows me to do is it allows me to set up when the camera is, thinks something is happening. Uh -huh. So I can schedule events. I can schedule, I can say, look, if, if I start losing connectivity, my Wi-Fi goes down, if the Ethernet cable goes down, yeah. uh, then use the backup method, like record to the card or, or push over the other connection so that I get footage of what's actually happening. It hmm. detects motion, it can detect audio detection, so if, if there's too much noise in a particular area, it will say, okay, once it gets over three decibels, start yeah. recording. Whoa. The reason why you want this is you, you really don't want your camera to always think that there's something going on. You only right. want it to warn you when something's actually happening. So I right. can say, hey, if the audio goes above 30 decibels, send me an email message along with a picture Mm -hmm. And if I see something in the picture, I can log in and go ahead and get the video. Oh, it's moving around. Does that mean it updated? This, <laughs> this yep. little guy just spun around. Oh, little... guy, he's flipping around. Uh, no, because, yeah, what happens is if you're on alert all the time, you'll just end up ignoring it. And Besides. you want to be able to set parameters for it to notify you. Like, somebody just came up to the door or there was a noise made. But and uh, Plutonium Shore wanted to know if the Amcras Chem is also a router. It's not a router. It's a mm. device but it has some router-like uh, functions, which I really like. Yeah. So it just reset, which means it's finished the update process. Yep, 100%, it succeeded. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-log in. Um, if I remember my password, oh. one, two, three, four, five, it's really Phew. hard. Oh, good thing you remembered. I know, right? Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is, the, the other camera is set for 192.168.200.211. This one I'm gonna set for 192.168.200.212. Okay, and keeping with our uh, Oops. our strategy of having all the security stuff on the two hundred IPs. Correct. Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's hard looking at this angle. <laughs> at one four three at two one two, and gateway. Yep, 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 yep. Save. Saved successful. Okay, so let's log in. Make sure we're working. Save. All right, so. This is my camera. So my, both of my cameras are now set up. And, and um, if I were to go to, let's go here, 192.168.200.212, oh, 212, I can now log in on this browser, which actually will show me the image. And it's, it's because I'm super paranoid about the plugins that I allow it to run. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, but it does mean I have to reload. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the software doesn't look like it's uh, super antiquated either. It looks like they did a decent job. They of, did a uh, decent job. I'd like to see it be a bit more refined, but now I've got two cameras. Let's go back to them live here. So when I set up these cameras, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want overlapping fields. Oh, right. Because you always want coverage 
and you want to be able to overlap. So someone can't turn away from a camera. Mm -hmm. because or have turn, a blind spot. You, know, you turn away from a camera, you're turning into another camera. Yeah. Uh, and so now that I've got the two cameras, I think the next step is I need to hook this up to a NAS. Yes, yes, and start recording video. Because remember, one of the biggest requests we had is people wanted something like a drop cam, but they didn't want it to be constantly using up their bandwidth. Right. So if we can record locally rather mm -hmm. than into the cloud, it means that we can save that bandwidth for important things like watching Bob's Burgers, <laughs> and instead only bring yeah. up the security camera system when we get notified that there's an event. Right, that's a much more efficient system. Yeah. Now, we're going to get into those NASs in just a bit, but you know what I want to do first, Brian? Mm, I think we should thank a sponsor. I want to thank a sponsor, and I also want to uh, do a big mea culpa, because we've had this sponsor for a while, mm -hmm. and I had great use of a sponsor like them, and I did not take advantage of it, and I lost stuff. <laughs> and you know it's something that you you don't think about until it happens to yeah, you yeah. especially for someone who, like you who travels a lot i travel i travel a lot but it was actually when i got home uh, for, of course folks i'm talking about tracker now tracker is a coin sized device that helps you maintain your connection to all of your important things you've got a smartphone you've got a smart car hopefully you're smart enough to know that those things can wander away i was not now here's here's what happened to me mm -hmm. um, last week or was it last week? It might have been the week before. I, I had gotten back home, and um, one of my brothers left the garage door open, and we had an event on campus. And while the garage door was open, it was probably only open for about 45 minutes, someone went in through the garage, went into the storage area, found my gear bag, one of my gear bags, and just took it and ran. Whoa, swiped it. Just swiped it. And in there, there was a bunch of Arduinos, there was a bunch of LEDs, a couple of my batteries. Um, it's a couple of my one of my soldering kits. I and remember you talking yeah, about that. that and you're really like, well, have fun with like. It wasn't anything that was super expensive, I guess, but it was it was a little. They, got, they had a prototype. I had created a oh. prototype USB killer, the one that will charge up capacitors and then hit the the PC with like two thousand volts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping they plug that in. Yeah, and but, then, and then uh, mess up their yeah, their stuff. Yeah. Oh, so, but uh, someone uh, on Twitter said you didn't have a tracker on the bag and I realized oh my good that yes! would have been perfect that would have been perfect because one of the things that tracker does is it's using a mesh system a mesh GPS system which means it doesn't have to be within range of no. my phone as long as it's within the range of another tracker device and there are millions of them right it will, it will phone home I could have figured out where my bag went but uh, well, I was hoping you, you you actually had one in there I no know, I know oh, I have one of my keys I have one on my car. Yep. I have one on uh, my my like backpack. That's I that's did what not I put it in my gear bag. I have one on my backpack. I actually have one on my motorcycle too. But yeah. Anyway. Well, folks, of course, what we're talking about is the tracker. It's the best way to make sure that you stay apprised of the location of all your smart things. Now it's that time of year. Don't lose your luggage or valuable gifts this season. A tracker makes losing things a thing of the past and uh, we can tell you how to get one for free. Now, the Tracker Bravo locates misplaced keys, wallets, luggage, gear bags, instruments, bicycles, electronic devices, even pets in seconds. It's a coin-sized device constructed with aluminum, an anodized aluminum case for the thinnest, most durable tracking. Now, you can attract it easily. You can attach it to your items via a key loop or adhesive, or like what I should have done, put it into uh, one of the side pockets so that they don't even know it's there. The Tracker is enabled by Bluetooth LE, which means it uses a very little power so the battery can last up to a year. You can add a laser engraved message to each tracker Bravo, like return or, or pet information, and you can now personalize your tracker with a customized printed image. Uh, you can help loved ones track their new gadgets. Trackers make great stocking stuffers. Uh, this is what we got here. Tracker was nice enough to send us a customized tracker. This one is uh, it's engraved with know-how. Uh, uh, this is the one I, 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 I just got. Thank you very much, Tracker, because this is going into my new gear bag so that if you uh, want to take my stuff, uh, I'm going to send Cranky Hippo after you. <laughs> right? Can you, you don't want that. Do me a solid. There we go. Ah, how about that? Mm. Now, you, now, this pairs to both Android and iOS devices, and it lets you find its precise location with a tap of a button. It's really that easy. Your phone can track up to 10 devices at once, and you can customize two-way separation alerts. So if you start to wander away from your tracker, you can have your phone say, ah, uh -uh, hey, you're in the coffee shop. Go back and get it before you go to the restroom. Uh, if you lose your phone, you can press the button on the back of the tracker, which allows you to ring the phone even if it's set for silent. It's a very cool feature because now you have a way to find your phone, which, you know, is hiding out between the sofa cushions. With over 3.5 million devices shipped, Tracker has the largest crowd GPS network in the world. This is that mesh GPS I was talking about, which means your lost items will show up on a map 
even if it's miles and miles away. Now, if you lose your item, the tracker app records its last known location on a map. When another tracker user comes within one 100-foot range of your item, you'll receive a GPS update of where your item is located. Folks, it's that time and it's that place, and you want to keep all your gear. And you could do it with Tracker. Go to the Tracker. That's T H E T R A C K R dot com, and never lose your possessions again. Plus, just for our audience, if you enter the promo code KNOWHOW, you'll get a free Tracker Bravo with your order. That's T H E T R A C K R dot com. Promo code KNOWHOW to get your free Tracker Bravo today. Never lose your smart gear in a dumb way. Thanks, Tracker, for your support of Know How. Seriously, that's. There's just, you know, I, I, I kind of let it go, but now I'm getting mad again. Yeah, like, <laughs> thinking ah. about it, yeah, definitely. It's, you know, it's not just that I lost stuff, which I, you know, I never liked doing, but yeah. it's like it was in my house. So someone came into part of my house and got stuff. It's very, uh, very <laughs> rage inducing. I had a car stolen from me. Oh, and I yeah, thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was before Tracker, I think, was even a company. But uh, I remember coming out to the parking spot that I that thought. Rage. I was like, did I park somewhere else? No, I definitely didn't park somewhere else. And it wasn't even so much that I was angry that it was stolen. It was just like, I didn't know what happened to it, like where it went. What ha and then they ended up finding it just stripped above Aww. Sacramento, nothing left, and it was like that was my baby. My first car, destroyed. my first car got stolen, and uh, then they found it. The people felt so bad because it was a piece of crap, so they actually like they <laughs> fixed some things. It was a, it was a Datsun 310 <laughs> and brought GX. it back. It was yeah. horrible. It's a oh. horrible, horrible car. They're like, oh, we should never have taken this. <laughs> it had like 12 <laughs> horsepower. It was awesome. It was so fast around the corners, Is, you know, downhill. Right. Is that the one that you would put in neutral and then roll down the hill with, and see how far you could get, with, and then you, you, you the ran into your ran parents' into garage? garage? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My brother told you about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. He said your dad wasn't too happy when he found out like no, two years the, later. No, it was two yeah. years, ten years. Ten, ten years, years later. Because <laughs> we were doing renovations to the house, mm -hmm. and my dad's like, hey, how come the second garage door is like pushed in four inches? Like, I, 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 I don't know. know. I, I got to so go. That's so weird. Back that must college. have been someone else, dad. It was the house was probably already like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, the security cams are cool, but what you need is a way to record all of that imagery, all of those videos yeah. locally. Because, again, we don't want to use up your bandwidth. We want a way to have an inventory of everything that goes on in our special places without having to use up those non-recoverable assets. Right. 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 Which is why we're using a NAS. Now, you've seen me use this company a lot. This is Synology. This is one of their smaller ones. I love this. This is the one that travels with me. Inside, I've got two, uh, what is it? six terabyte drive. So there's 12 terabytes, actually six, because I have it in a, in oh, a, you know, a Stripe uh, parallel. Plate. Yeah, or? just to make sure that I don't lose anything. Yeah. But it's fast. It's crazy, crazy functional. Now, this thing is actually one of the units that uh, they sent me, I think, was it like two years ago? It's a DS713 Plus. It's a two-bay NAS, uh, up to eight, 16 gigabytes of storage. You can put two eight terabyte drives in this thing. It's a dual core 2.13 gigahertz processor along with a uh, one gigabit, uh, one gigabyte of DDR3 memory, dual gigabit Ethernet ports, plus dual USB 3.0 ports, plus an eSATA port, so you can extend this thing. Uh -oh. This thing is a monster. And what I love yeah. about it is, uh, and we've seen this before, the Synology ecosystem is all the same from their the NASs all the way up to the router. The, router. the interface looks the same. It acts the same. It functions oh, the same. I love that about the Synology, Synology router that yeah, they I got use it right. as the software. Yeah, and then they figured out early on that hardware is good. You know, give people good hardware. Don't skimp on the hardware. However, yeah. if the UI changes from product to product, there's no incentive to keep growing your ecosystem. Whereas, yeah. I've got more than a dozen Synology NASs that have now replaced all my ready NAS uh, NASs. Those mm -hmm. used to be my NAS of choice. Now it's Synology because it's fast enough for me to edit straight over the network yeah. uh, because they're all redundant. So I, I have them set up to mirror each other. So I really am never going to lose anything. Right. And I can do things like this will actually run VMs. This will run containers. Oh, that's cool. Uh, th this is actually one of the, this is my spare. So I have this one set up. Um, I can run a, a container on this that has an image of a browser along with uh, a VLC. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to, or VNC, sorry, it allows me to 
uh, shell into that container, right. and I can use a browser that even if it gets owned, when the container shuts off, it just it's, goes away. Oh, that's so clever. It's a I very like cool that. system. Yeah. Um, but Synology also recognized that not a lot of people are going to want to buy one of their higher ends because they're a little expensive. In fact, this one, yeah. and including the, the one that replaced it, which is the 716 Plus, that's the mm -hmm. new version, uh, you're talking about $500 empty. 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 Okay. So that's no drives. Well, empty. yeah, you know, hard drives aren't the expensive part anymore. No. <laughs> Especially yeah. if you want like uh, terabytes and stuff like that of spinning drive. But it looks like a pretty nice piece of kit. And I don't know, if I had something like this security cam set up, uh, I'd want something like this to record on too. And every Synology NAS has the ability, and we'll show you in a little bit how it works, but in the interface, uh, either DSM for the disk station for the, the NASs or mm -hmm. SRM for the router, uh, they've got, it's an app center. So you can like choose what do you mm -hmm. want. You want to add DNS server, you want to add a media server. There's something called surveillance station, and surveillance station can be installed on every Synology NAS. It turns it mm -hmm. into a network DVR for any IP connected camera. So Ooh, not just these cool. AMPRESS, yeah. But like my access cameras, the like the D-Link cameras, any of them, if they if they communicate over IP with a standard streaming codec, yeah. this yeah. can record the feed. Oh, that's brilliant. I like that. But Synology went one step further because they what? said, look, this is nice, and I'm doing this on my big 15, uh, 1515 or 1516, I can't remember, the, the newest right. version, which is a five bay unit, uh, each with a six terabyte drive in it. It's very, very nice. But um, they wanted to give something at the lower price point, mm -hmm. you know, not 500, 700, or thousand dollars. They wanted they wanted something that people could actually afford, along with the cameras. So they created this. This is the DS416J. Now it is still a Synology product. This uses the same operating system. So if you know how to drive the uh, the 713 or the like the 1513, you'll know how to drive this. But what they've done is they've, they've done a little bit of cost cutting in order to get this down to a price point that people can actually live it with. It looks now, like a little PC. Yeah, it's got does. a power button yeah, on the does. front. Actually, yeah, can you back that one off? Actually, no, yeah. don't, don't back it off. It's fine. So you'll notice, uh, you know, it's got this, the classic bread box size. It's, it doesn't feel as solid as some of the other Synology NASs. Yeah, this feels like a uh, metal brick. Yeah, whereas this, you know, this is, this is more like what you would expect from a slightly budget device, but it's still very well designed. You'll notice there is, there's no hot swap caddies. Uh, if okay. you look at Synology NASs, they're famous for having these hot swaps. So I can just pop, this is keyed in, but I can pop this out while it's still running and replace a failed drive and not mm -hmm. miss a beat. Mm -hmm. This doesn't do that. So they took out the hot swap functionality because that actually does cost a little bit of money. And what they've done is they've given me um, the screw type device. Uh, so I can open okay. up the back here. So this is more of a set it and forget it kind oh, of. Correct. Thing. And actually, you know what? Back off the uh, back off the side camera. I will so back can... off that side camera. Thank you. How about that? So I've I've still got my four drive bays, but these are not hot swaps. So they are they're actually screwed in on the side. Hmm. Uh, and what they were figuring, and there's like, look, if you're going to be using this as a security array, you're not going to be hot swapping drives a lot. No. You're going to put four in there, and you're just going to let it run. Let it sit. Let it sit. Uh, along with those four caddies, you're going to have a single gigabit Ethernet port versus the, the dual on the mm -hmm. 713 Plus. You get one USB 3 port and one USB 2 port. This is going to be important because you can expand the functionality. I can actually put like a, a wireless USB dongle in there and make this an access point or ah, make it a router. Very or, clever. Yeah, or I could put a 3G card in there, a USB dongle, and then get a uh, secondary connectivity for my network. Very cool. But I can also use the USB 3 port in case, let's say, I wanted to put an external 10 terabyte drive right. so that I can back up Back up to stuff, yeah. Right. It's got dual fans, which is kind of important because remember, this is a constant on device. Right, so keep it cool. Keep Worst it thing cool. you can do is uh, overheat your hard drives. Yeah, no, they will die. Uh, but everything else is the same. The way it works is the same as the higher end Synology NASs. And that, that's what I love so much. About. I feel like for, for me, this would be the better solution because I would want to just set it up. I won't be hot swapping drives Probably out. Not. I'd just be setting it up for my security cameras and backing up and maybe doing some, use it as like a media server and stuff. Uh, next time you come over to the house, I'm going to show you where the NASs are kept. It used to be the linen closet. <laughs> and I like took over the bottom two shelves and yeah. now it's just switches and, and like the, the, we have a housekeeper, great yeah. guy. And he, every once in a while he goes, uh, is it okay for me to take towels off of here? Because 
<laughs> I feel like I'm going to get electrocuted. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 it's cool. It's, it's cool. cool. It's, it's cool. I mean, you might, but... <laughs> <laughs> but go for it. Now, this is what their uh, low end is going to go for. And believe it or not, this is sub $300. That's $290. So you're looking okay. from, from like the higher end, $1,500 to you know even this, which is $500, down to $290. This really becomes affordable. How much is the, the two bay? Uh, that two bay, that's like uh, $500 two to $700. Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, was no, just, I could see that. That's a two. So those are like. I, I would avoid those. Those are the, those are the super budget ones. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, just don't do that. No. Yes, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's still curious. it still has the dual core processor, so it's got it's got horsepower, mm -hmm. only 512 megabytes of memory. So you know you're not. So you're not going to be playing Minecraft don't, on it. Yeah, well, don't throw a bunch <laughs> of stuff on it. You'll, you'll really bog it down. <laughs> okay. And versus 300 megabytes per second throughput on this, yeah. or way higher on the higher end ones, this one tops out at about 100 megabytes per second both ways. Okay, so you're not using it for Docker and no. stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but we thought, uh, now that you've taken a look at this, and before we get into actually setting this up to be used with the security cameras, why not take a look at one of my favorite all-time Synology-based NASs? Boom. Burn. Sizzle. Crack. Crunch. Zap. Disaster is how IOSafe made its name in the storage business. They make fantastically tough storage devices that don't just store your data, but protect it against fire, flood, crush, and the like. With the release of the 1513 Plus, IOSafe takes the indestructible storage game to another level, but we'll get back to that because I don't want to lose the fact that even without the destruction proofing, the 1513 Plus is one heck of a machine. The IOSA 1513 Plus is a 5-bay network-attached storage box equipped with a dual-core 2.13 GHz Intel Atom and 2 GB of system memory expandable to 4 GB. The first thing that you'll notice about the 1513 Plus is that it's a beast. It measures 14.7 inches by 8.75 inches by 12.5 inches and weighs about 60 pounds with drives. The reason for the size and weight is that IOSafe has partnered with NAS specialist Synology to encase the heart of a Synology DS1513 Plus inside of IOSafe's armor. Opening the front of the box with a hex driver exposes a sealed watertight compartment. The boys at IOSafe looked through the data and found that most data loss and fires comes from the water being used to douse the flames. So they designed the 1513 Plus to survive full immersion in 10 feet of salt water for at least 72 hours. However, should drive replacement be necessary, the compartment opens with a single hex bolt that gives you access to its five bays. In our review unit, filled with cool running 2 terabyte Toshiba hard drives in slide out trays. Everything is encased within a layer of high strength steel wrapped around IOSAFE's proprietary data cast fireproof insulation a water-infused ceramic that releases that water in the form of steam if the cask gets above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The ablating ceramic keeps the assembly cool enough to avoid drive damage, and the steam creates positive pressure in the case to keep out superheated smoke and soot. Combined with IOSAFE's active airflow cooling vents, which allow airflow to the electronics during operation but melt shut in a fire, the 1513 Plus can protect its drives from 1550 degree heat for 30 minutes. A note about performance. The IOSA 1513 Plus is fast, really fast for a network attached storage device. Throughput in RAID 5 mode is rated for 350.94 megabytes per second read and 202.34 megabytes per second write. In our speed tests, we were able to simultaneously flood the gigabit ethernet ports of three test machines, each to their practical maximum throughput without topping out the 1513 Plus. Of course, to do that, you can't just put one or two Ethernet ports on the back of the NAS because the choke point would just move to the NAS. The 1513 Plus overcomes that limitation by having four bindable, VLANable gigabit Ethernet ports. In addition, the 1513 Plus sports four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and two eSATA ports, all of which can be put to good use either in expanding the capacity of the 1513 Plus or expanding its feature set. With specially designed eSATA connectors, you can link a 1513 Plus to two IOSAFE N513X expansion units for a total of 15 drive bays. Paired with 6TB drives, that means you can have up to 90 terabytes of raw capacity. Since the 1513 Plus uses Synology's Disk Station operating system, it can use all of Synology's apps. 
That means that the box is not only a super fast disaster resistant storage array, but also a Plex media server, a private cloud storage device, a network security camera recorder, Amazon Glacier Sync, Radius Server, an antivirus server, a streaming audio server, a torrent box, email server, LDAP directory, data replicator, iTunes server, Apple Time Machine, a VPN server, and pretty much anything else you can imagine. It supports FTP, FTPS, SMB, and FS SIFs, as well as iSCSI. It's been certified for VMware and Hyper-V for those who want to use the 1513 Plus in an SMB or virtual server environment. But it doesn't end there. You can use the USB ports to plug in USB storage devices, but you can also use them to connect 802.11 ABG and AC or Bluetooth adapters for hotspot functionality. You can connect 3G, 4G USB dongles for internet access. It can be a print server, a router, and combined with a DTV stick, it can even DVR and stream programming from OTA antennas or your cable provider. The 1513 Plus is louder than IOSafe's previous NAS boxes, a result of the use of two cooling fans in the back, but it's still quiet enough to have under or behind your desk. The regular operating sound level is 25 decibels, while full cranking will bring it to 59 decibels. In other words, if you have even a moderately noisy office, you're not going to hear the 1513 Plus unless it's next to your head. Of course, the single feature that binds all IOSafe products together is their data recovery service guarantee. The loaded version of the 1513 Plus automatically gives you one data recovery event for the length of your plan. If you lose any data for any reason, fire, flood, earthquake, gunshot, or just an IT worker accidentally deleting your data, IOSafe will cover $5,000 of the recovery cost. On the pro side, the IOSafe 1513 Plus is an incredible combination of speed, features, and durability. Also, Synology's DRS makes the purchase price worth it, even without a best-in-class NAS. On the con side, price. Just the price. At between three dollars and $6,000 for a fully equipped unit with multiple years of DRS, it's way beyond the range of even a power user. But then again, with this feature set, performance and DRS, it's a bargain for small to medium businesses or the home professional. No, I know that's that's sticker shock. It's crazy yeah. sticker shock. But remember, inside of that was a fifteen thirteen, which has now become the fifteen fifteen. That was actually that's, that's a, an older unit. Right. Uh, and what the newer unit adds is they've just upped the speed a little bit. So it's you know works the same way. And again, one of the things I love about Synology, <laughs> if you didn't need all that protection, the fireproof protection, you right. can get that for you know under a thousand dollars. Right. Right. But how it depends how valuable is your data. Right. Right. And like, so <laughs> what I have is I actually have one of those loaded up with four terabyte drives, and then I have a 1513 next to it. That's the one that I actively use. Mm -hmm. The IOSafe just sinks. Okay. And so if like there was a fire, the 1513 would be destroyed, right. but the one that's in the IOSafe enclosure would be would survive. Fine. Yeah. yeah. That that is like your your Holocaust or a, a post-apocalyptic hard drive. Uh, it really is. A solution. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, remember this, you're not paying for the hardware. The big cost is the DRS. That's yeah. what you get with Synology, the, the uh, data recovery service. Because if you've ever lost anything on a drive and you've tried to send it out to one of those, those data recovery services, mm -hmm. it can, it's thousands upon thousands, up to like $10,000, depending yeah. on how much data that you're recovering. So if you are a small business, that actually does make sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, and from from the standpoint, if you've ever been in the past where you have lost data, that it's unrecoverable. Like, so yeah. what what is the price that you would pay to get that back? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and by the way, that uh, that ablative ceramic that you saw inside the uh, that yeah. when it heats up, it, it actually vents out that water. Is pretty cool tech. That's the same stuff they use inside of black boxes. That's why black boxes can survive uh, a, 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 a the fire? fire from a crash for thirty minutes. Right. Because that's how you much do a time. Jet fuel. And right. Yeah. At, at fifteen hundred degrees, that's how much time it takes for all the water to to ablate from the ceramic. And then right. once that ablates, now the equipment's heating up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But until then. It that's, can never rise above the temperature of steam, which is it's fine. That's, you will be able to recover her yeah. from that, yeah. Very cool tech. Very yeah. cool tech. Uh, when we come back, it's time to do this. We've got the NAS set up. We've got our security cameras. We're going to show you how you set up surveillance station. It's actually not that hard. It's super simple. Nice. We want to give you the basics, and then in a future episode, we're going to get jiggy with it. But before we get jiggy, you, wanna, you know what I want to do? I think we have one more sponsor to yeah, thank. Yeah, I want to get smart. You want to get smart? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to take a lot. 
unless mm -hmm. you get automatic. Exactly. <laughs> automatic has, has been something that we've been using here at Twit for a while. Leo has one on his car. I've got one on my car. I don't know if you've got one on your car. If I could if I wanted to because I have an older, I have a 2000 Frontier. But uh, it's, nothing, it's definitely not smart. Yeah, exactly. Now, we're getting used to having smart cars, but unfortunately, most of us don't have the latest Tesla. We don't have a BMW. Ooh. You don't have a Mercedes. You've got something like me, a Toyota Corolla, yep. you know, 2010. It's a good car, but it doesn't have those smarts that I yearn for. At least it didn't until I added automatic. Now, this is the Automatic Pro. This is just like the automatic that we've talked about for actually years on this network, except this one also has a 3G always-on connection, which means that you don't just pair your car with your phone while you're driving. You can access your stats, your, your fuel usage, your, your travel information via your online interface. It's yeah. a fantastic way to make sure that you're driving efficiently. Yeah, doesn't that port look familiar to you? Oh, maybe like just right the, underneath your dash? The onboard data port that uh -huh. you might have in your car? I love that thing. Now, automatic is a small adapter that turns your clunkier, older car into a smarter connected car. Now, with this Automatic Pro, their new unlimited 3G car adapter with no monthly fees or subscription, it lets you know where your vehicle is parked at all time. It lets you track your vehicle even when you're not with it. It also works with IFTTT for endless customization. That means you can connect your car to the rest of your life. Now, you can even link it to, uh, say, a Nest thermometer or an Amazon Echo. Imagine being able to say, Alexa, where did I park my car? And it being able to tell you exactly where it is. It's on the corner of 4th and 12th. It also lets you get human help in a crash. This is like one of those far more expensive systems that uh, requires a monthly subscription. Automatic Pro detects severe accidents and trained responders will call for help when you can't. Again, because it's connected via 3G all the time. It works on nearly every car made after 1996 and it takes just minutes to connect your car to your iPhone or Android device via Bluetooth. Plus, it even integrates with Apple Watch and Pebble. Oh, I have been using automatic for the last couple of years because I, I like to know how efficiently I'm driving. It, it, it kind of forces you to change your habits, and it's great. It means I've gone from about 34 miles per gallon to mm -hmm. like 42 miles per gallon. <laughs> I'm getting near you know. hybrid just because my phone tells me, hey, man, slow down. It's kind of like turning it into a game. And you, it is. You're wanting to see how high you can get that number. My, my, one of my proudest moments is I made it all the way from San Francisco to Las Vegas without ever hitting the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> that must have taken some patience. It, it, yeah. It's planning. It's like you're looking ahead, you're like, okay, I see that, that truck is merging. I'm just going right. to slow down now. It's like a high-speed chess game. It really is. Yeah. It is. And so if you can gamify your life and get a smart connected car, why wouldn't you with Automatic and Automatic Pro? Right now, you can get a special deal because you're such loyal listeners of know-how. Automatic Pro is normally $129.95, but when you use our exclusive offer code TWIT20, you'll save $20. Visit automatic.com slash twit for more information, and remember to use the offer code TWIT20 to save $20 off the regular purchase price. Once again, that's automatic.com slash twit. And we thank Automatic for the support of know-how. All right, Brian, let's, let's get into the final push here. Right. Uh, if you go to my uh, screen here, Alex, You'll notice that I've already logged into the uh, the uh, what I call Heimdall. This is Heimdall. Heimdall is my uh, my NAS that I've dedicated to the security system. Uh, uh, again, what I love about this is everything works the same. This is the same operating system, the same look and feel that I would get if I were using. It looks uh, just a like my router. <laughs> it looks just like your router. So yeah. Synology looks like Synology. This is such a good idea because it means when you learn one system, you've basically learned all the systems. Uh, this also does the same thing that the camera does, which it will tell you if something needs to be updated, right. uh, which is fantastic. It will automatically update. You don't need to download. You can do it straight I from this interface. I love that about my router. When right? I, I get the email, or it sends me an email, and it's like, I will be updating in 10 minutes. So if there's anything going on in the network, you should stop me now. But usually it's set to do it you know, in the middle of the night. It's so. proactive security. It, yeah. it's, you know, it's like, that. Yeah, you're going to need to do this let me just um, check with you first, yeah. unlike Windows, which <laughs> does it. Check with you first and say, hey, can I do this because mm -hmm. I, I really want the security patch. Right. Yeah. All right, let's go back here. So what I've got is this is the only package that I have installed. But if I wanted to, I have full access to all of those packages 
that I can install on the higher end devices. Everything again from the media server to the, the video recorder. Mm -hmm. Now remember this is a lower end device. Mm -hmm. It has half as much memory as the 213 and a quarter as much memory as some of the higher end units. So don't load it down. I mean, right. I, I, don't, I definitely don't want the surveillance station to fail out. So don't load it up with so much that it's gonna start to balk. I see. Yeah, but once I've got surveillance station running, uh, installed, which by the way is it's a one-click install. I can just go ahead and jump into here. It's going to open up a new interface, and now I have this is surveillance station itself. Ooh. Now the cool thing about this, which you're going to love this, and we're going to show this in a future episode, there's actually a mobile app that I can run on my Android or iOS device mm -hmm. where I can get this screen no matter where I am in the world. Oh, that's awesome. So it's like a drop cam, but I'm not using up all that bandwidth except when I'm connected. When you want to, yeah. yeah and it also lets you go forward and backward in time. Uh, and I can also receive alerts. Like it says, hey, I just detected motion inside hmm. the kitchen and there's not supposed to be anybody home. So, ah, so that's cool. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into IP camera. Uh, and what this does is this allows me to add the different cameras. I've already added one. And see that little red, that, let, me, let me increase my zoom here. See that little red dot? What does that mean? It means it's already recording. So it's, it's recording that camera, 192.168.200.211, to the hard drive. So it's, it's streaming, it's all good. But I have two cameras because you opened one up, so I'm going right. to add another one. Uh, super simple. All I have to do is add a camera. And I can even add a batch if I have like a text file with, with all my, uh, uh, IP all my stuff. And correct. Stuff. Cool. Oh, actually, I have to zoom it back out. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now I'm going to call this, what did I call the first one? Uh, Amcrest 2. Okay. Uh, really, what you want to do is you want to name it after something that actually represents where it is. So it'll be Hallway 1. Right. Or bedroom 1 or whatever it's going to be. East Wing. Right. Yes. And uh, remember, I set static IPs. That makes it a lot easier to do this part. 192.168.200.212. Uh, hmm. Port 80, I need to set the brand, and this is the nice thing about having a bundle from Synology. Amcrest is already in here. Oh, cool. And it's that camera, that, that, and, uh, wait, super secret password. Right, right. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> you sure there wasn't a six in there? I know, I know. Who knows? There you go. Oh, oh and popped uh, right up. There we go. So that means, and uh, uh, now I got the little green check mark, which means I'm good. So what it's going to do is... It's activating both cameras. It's going to take a little bit of while because what it's going to do is it's going to test, make sure that I've got the bandwidth to be able to record. Wow. But as soon as it's, it's good, it, just like the top one, I'll get that little red dot, and that little red dot means I'm now recording. Oh. It's that simple. What? So I can add dozens, well, I mean, I'd have to increase my licensing, but I can add all the IP-connected network cameras that this can see and it will automatically record their feeds. That's super cool. And you still have PTZ control. Precisely. Like. Yeah. Live so down view. here, I can do, still do two-way audio. I can still do PTZ. I can do live view analytics. Uh, it's going to take a while to activate that because it's got to go through its whole self-testing. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the live view because this pretty this is cool. So this is not the camera. This is oh, it's Chrome. <sighs> oh, which requires the Can you Chrome. The plugin. So what I got to huh. do is I got to go over to here. I totally forgot about that. Oh, the Chrome plugin thing? Yeah, because Chrome hmm. is whack. You know, I, that's been happening to me so many times. Like yeah. Chrome is just... Well, if these cameras start moving on their own, I have a suspicion that P. Delahanty, Mr. Patrick, is trying to get yeah, into that's them. That's why this is isolated. <laughs> <laughs> you think I trust the people who work in this building? Are you no, kidding me? Never. That would be silly. <laughs> okay, let's go into the live view. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, it's good. There we go. Well, and it so, even does like the multi -screen. Yeah, it'll stack up the, the videos for me. We need more cameras, Padre. We need like at least eight. Teen cameras. What are these? Security cameras for ants? Yeah, there has to be 10 times as many as this. Yeah, the cool thing is, I mean, I can tile it any way I want. I can make one big, one small. That's, that's actually all user settable. So, uh, of course, I only have two cameras right now, but I could add another uh, set. I can control the PTZs on, uh, an, on any of the ones that uh, I want. So, see, I can still control the PTZ on that camera, even though I'm not inside the camera interface. I'm inside the Synology interface. That's cool. Um, and you can also set duty. Now, these are not continuous duty cameras. They're not designed to always be moving back and forth. But I can set my events 
so that if it detects motion, it will automatically swivel the camera to, to follow the motion. Right. Right. Well, it, can it do uh, audio also? Like yep. If it hears audio swivel to that audio, it will. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, basically, any of the events. It's like a, it's like a big if t. Yeah. Right? Any event you can schedule to do anything. I can have it snap to a particular uh, location. I can have it follow motion. I can have it email. I can have it FTP. I can have it record to the local ca uh, card in addition to recording to the to this. Right. Uh, the other cool thing about Synology is Synology has its own service, mm -hmm. uh, which they, it's Synology Cloud. Um, which allows me to access my devices without poking holes through the firewall. You know how normally I'd have to open up ports? Yeah. What this does is rather than opening up ports, it's, it, every once in a while it pings out to the, the Synology server and says, hey, do you want me to make a connection? Do you yeah. want me to make a connection? Do you want me to make a connection? Once you've connected to that, the next time it pings, it says, oh, you want me to make a connection? Mm -hmm. Connects to that service, connects the two of you, and now you're in without having to open anything up on your firewall. Way more secure way to do it. I like that. Okay, so if I wanted to access this from not my local network, I would say I was here, then it, how would I, how exactly would that work? Yeah, so let, let's say uh, this is inside, like this is right now, this is natted to natted to natted. So, right. And it's I have no access to, to the first two nats, which means I have no way to poke a hole through the firewall to make sure that this gets the right port. Right. But when, let's say I, I, uh, I use my phone, mm -hmm. what it's going to do is it's going to connect to my, my personal Synology cloud server. Right. This might be pinging that server every 10 seconds. Very small packet, just to say, now? Yeah. Now? Now? Until now? it gets a uh, confirmation. Right. And, okay. the and the next time it says yes, what's happening is the connection is being initiated from inside the network. The firewall will let that through just fine. Ah, that's, that's it's very like cool. It. It's, it's a very good system. Yeah. Oh, if you go back to my, uh, my screen here, Alex, you'll notice the resolution is not great, and that, the reason for that is I have them set to record at 640 by 480. The reason for that is because this router I'm using is only a 100 megabyte per second. Oh, it would never be able it to joke, handle that. It yeah. would choke. But I can, do, I can record at uh, 1920 by 1080. Just know that the storage requirements are way higher for 1920. So can you set the parameters of how much hard drive space you, s you yes. use? And, and you can you can say, okay, start recycling once after. the drive gets full. Yeah. Uh, anything you can do with a Synology NAS, you can do with this. So you can say, warn me when I'm about to, to run out of space. Mm -hmm. And then you can just open up the back, plug in a new drive, and it just keeps going. It will automatically <laughs> add the space. You're good to go. Nice. That's so, pretty slick. I like that. This is the all-in-one security cam this solution. This is the all-in-one. And actually, Alex, if you go to that link, uh, at, at Newegg right now, you can buy this whole bundle, which includes both of the cameras, the NAS, two hard drives uh, to give you, what is it, uh, six, six terabytes, I think? It's two, three gigabyte, two terabyte two drives? Ter Two terabytes, like it looks like. Yeah, so uh, for for seven hundred and fifty bucks. For so for seven hundred and fifty bucks, you've got yourself a security system that you can easily add on to. Very cool, and not just like a dumb security system. One no. with the the cameras that mm -hmm. with the PTZ capabilities and stuff. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. I've, I've been wanting to do something like this on Know How for a while, but the problem has always been the cost because I can't tell people to go out and buy a three thousand dollar NAS right. and then another thousand dollars of cameras. Whereas for seven hundred and fifty you get yourself a decent system and then maybe add some cheapy D-links. Yeah. And, and you know, just cover the blind spots. Very cool. Yeah. I like it. Well, we're going to be doing more of this. This is not the last time you're going to see the system because we need to show you the mobile app. Mm -hmm. We need to show you, uh, show you some advanced techniques for mounting your security cameras. And we're also going to kind of stress this DS416 out. Yeah, you just figure out how long can we push till it breaks. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the mobile app because with the uh, Synology router, I use the mobile app all the time to, to figure out uh, what's on my net network, what is using up the most bandwidth. And then I can actually set priority to certain devices while I'm you know, like if uh, my wife is watching something in a different room, I'll set my Xbox to high priority. Right. So, <laughs> and then she'll, she always wonders, like, why the streaming kind of degrades when I'm playing video games. But Actually, you know, uh, there's, I, I, I have done this. This does, it can do stateful packet inspection. So it could look for Xbox packets. Yeah. And then when it senses that, it could tell the camera to snap to the entertainment console <laughs> to record you playing Xbox. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you yeah, could. But you could. You could totally set it could. to do that. Yeah. You could, could. I don't know if I would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, we know that this has been a lot of information. Uh, we want to make sure that you can do this project on your own. I mean, if you have been looking for a security camera system that's not going to break the bank, yeah. this 
is pretty good. I mean, this is out of the box. This doesn't require you to build anything. It just requires you to hook it up. Yeah, as Fantastic. much fun as it was for me to do my Raspberry Pi security camera thing. This works better. <sighs> A lot better. A yeah. Ten times or more. Yeah, better. <laughs> but if you want to know how to build one of your own or where to get any of the parts that we've talked about, uh, just go to our show notes page, which, where do they find that, Brian? Oh, well, they can find that at twit.tv slash kh. And yeah, we'll have all the uh, the links for the products that we talked about today. Uh, definitely all the default IPs that we had on the show and uh, passwords that Padre used just so that you can have those for your own reference, right? Yeah. Because who, who could... You don't want to one, forget two, three, four, the, the yeah the most secure password in the world. One, By two, the way, three, four, folks, if you ever use one two three four five as your password, shame, you, yeah, shame, shame. I'm Padre ashamed. will find you. I, I will dress if you up have like a shame bell, none. and he will shame. <laughs> shame. <laughs> it is your fault. That's why we can't have a nice internet. Your it stuff gets hacked. That's why we lose you know dying DNS. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, that's not the only place that you're going to be able to get in touch with the Know How community. The best place is to go to our Google Plus group. There you're gonna find over 10,000 Kitas. That's our know-it-alls. They've got projects that you can try. They've got questions that you can answer. And it's just a fun place to enjoy the journey that is the maker experience. Again, that's the Google Plus group for know-how. Right, but if you wanna contact us directly or see what we're doing when we're not uh, on know-how or what we have coming up on know-how, I know uh, one of the projects I've been teasing is doing the Raspberry Pi MAME again. Oh, and. Maybe we've got planned Raspberry Pi, Retro Pi Madness with three hosts from the Twit TV network. Mm. If you think you can handle that much Raspberry Pi goodness, <laughs> you'll want to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you're going to find me at Padre SJ. There you'll see what I'm not doing when I'm not here because I don't I only really exist when I'm at Twit. I sad. <laughs> that got dark. It got, got dark really real dark. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you, know, you disappear, and then the only <laughs> just, time... Uh, yeah, you fade into the shadows. <laughs> of course, there is a third member of our team. He is invaluable. He's a good man, and he got In himself... The abyss. Who, wait, you, someone dropped you off some fresh bread? Because that, uh, that just smells it's, fantastic. Yes. You're going to share that with everyone, right? No. Yes. No, that's, that's a no. That's an <laughs> Alex no. You're going to find him at A-N-E-L-F-3, where you can see pictures like this which is when Brian drains all the happiness out of Alex's life. That's right. That's right. That is and the exact moment that my soul was fully dead. Yep. And then I'm going to take your bread, and it's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, I am Father Robert Ballasare. And I'm Brian Burdett. And now that you know how, go roll your own security.